Sony's been taking the Sony Xperia Z and putting it through its paces with a bunch of different variations. Most recently, we saw the blown up version, the Xperia Z Ultra, that huge device. But now, Sony has decided to take things just a little bit simpler and a little bit smaller. Hey, it's Joshua Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Sony Xperia ZR. This can be somewhat considered the mini edition of the Sony Xperia Z and Z Ultra, but only in design. In all other respects, this is a phone that can certainly stand on its own. Falling under the 5-inch screen measurement, the ZR comes in at 4.5 inches and is all around an easier phone to handle than its bigger brethren. The design is pretty classic Xperia, with white plastic wrapping around the screen on the front. Below the screen is a notification light in the shape of a nice futuristic looking line that was first seen in the Xperia ZL. Around the sides, we have an accented gray color, with the same button layout we've come to expect from any Xperia phone. The silver power button and volume rocker above a small but still welcome addition of a dedicated camera button. All of the buttons are small but manageable, though there is a bit of a squishiness and a lack of tactile feel to them that honestly I didn't really like. An expected IP certification means that the headphone jack up top and the micro USB port on the side get small plastic covers. Around the back, we actually get a removable cover, which includes everything that entails, the SIM and SD card slots, along with a removable battery. I do have to admit that it is a little odd to see these two important features available consistently in the mid-range and not the top tier. Nonetheless, the cover is made of a simple plastic with no texture or design. All you get is the Xperia name and the camera optics above the flash diode. Obviously, the 4.5-inch form factor makes this feel easy in the hands. Everything is easily reachable from a neutral grip, but the button layout does seem a little low considering the size of this phone, which is a minor but noticeable gripe. While this isn't a super light phone, there is a lack of heft that is accompanied by a somewhat hollow feeling. All of this leads to, simultaneously, a phone that is very light but also toes that quality line. I wouldn't go as far as to say that there is a low quality build or feel to this, but the smooth, simple plastic and the hollow feeling within somewhat detract from it. The TFT capacitive display is 4.55 inches large and packs a decent amount of power, which puts the Xperia ZR above many of its mini counterparts. Capable of 720p and packing 323 pixels per inch, the Bravia engine also helps with the color reproduction. Overall, this is much like a smaller version of the screen found on the Xperia Z, with some improvements. Brightness is adequate, though you're going to have to crank it up in broad daylight. Colors do have a good level of contrast, and thankfully Sony has at least gotten somewhat better at viewing angles since the original Xperia Z. It brings the same Xperia display quality in a smaller size, which honestly is kind of a nice feat. While we thought the Xperia Z kind of missed the mark by packing a then somewhat aging Snapdragon S4 Pro, it makes perfect sense for this later mid-range offering. The quad-core processor comes in at 1.5GHz and is backed by the Adreno 320 and 2GB of RAM. As expected, users get good and reliable performance from a chipset that has had over the last year to prove itself. The somewhat simpler Xperia UI does also help in this regard, so moving around the OS in the ZR is a smooth experience. General users will remain quite happy with their experience on the Xperia ZR, which is outfitted with just enough power to handle just about anything today's demands throw at it. IP58 certification helps keep all of the hardware on the Xperia ZR dust-free and protected in up to one meter of water. And you'd want to protect all the all-important features of removable battery and micro SD card slot, all found underneath that removable back cover. The rest of the story is pretty familiar with GPS, Bluetooth, NFC, but there is no IR blaster included. Given the lackluster performance of the Xperia Z speakers, I didn't expect the ZR to really surpass it. I was about right. As is the case with all Xperia phones these days, a couple different versions are available for HSDPA and LTE connectivity, so be sure what you're getting for your network. Being able to have a spare battery handy is often an important feature to users, but with the smaller specifications, the 2300mAh unit included with the Xperia ZR is able to go the distance. 
straight video playback is able to crack close to the 7 hour mark, and moderate to slightly heavy usage will still take you from waking up to sleeping without truly tapping out. At the end of one long day, I still had 20% battery life left, and was pretty pleasantly surprised that this 4.5 inch screen device wasn't really breaking a sweat. This comes as little surprise however, considering there is less screen to display, less pixel density to process, and a less demanding processing package to power. And even in the camera, Sony didn't want to compromise high quality and power. For a smaller phone by today's standards, having a 13 megapixel camera is a little unheard of. Nonetheless, the Xperia ZR comes with a camera that can actually rival some of the top tier devices available now. In the app, you get the usual Xperia editions like Superior Auto, a mode that finds the right scene mode for your shot. It is probably my favorite auto mode on a smartphone camera because it's not too intrusive, and it just tells you what it thinks would work, so if you need to change it, you certainly can. Otherwise, you get HDR, sweeping panorama, and a myriad of filters. Picture quality is quite decent, and is very reminiscent of the good performing Xperia Z. Details are captured quite well, and dullness in color reproduction is kept to a minimum. Without a full comparison, it's hard to see if the ZR really rivals or surpasses current top smartphone cameras, but from this cursory glance, it's easy to like what comes out of these optics. Low light shots obviously get more noise, but the flash diode helps with that. The ZR is also capable of 1080p video capture, effectively translating picture quality to movies. HDR can also be turned on in video mode too. Ultimately, you get a great performing camera in a phone that is supposed to take a step back from the cutting edge. When it comes to software, Sony doesn't really stray from what we've already seen from them. The Xperia UI is back in this Android 4.1 version that includes Google Now on top of its own editions. The Xperia app staples of the Walkman, Movies, and Album bring very Sony-esque media players to the fray. All of these make for a good media consumption experience, and since they can play a myriad of file types, you should have little problems. The only other additions are the small apps, little overlays that go on top of what you're already doing. These are just simple tools like calculators and timers and notes, but they do help with quick multitasking. Honestly, I've always liked the Xperia UI with its darker overall tones because it's like Sony's own take on a mostly stock looking Android. It's simple, it's elegant, and it doesn't try too hard. The Sony Xperia ZR isn't currently available for any carriers in the States, but you can find it unlocked for just under $500. We don't know where and we don't know when it will get put on any carriers, but I really hope that it does eventually. And so, there you have it. I actually wasn't expecting a whole lot from the Sony Xperia ZR, and that could possibly be because of the many different mid to low range phones that Samsung and let's say LG consistently put out. With Sony looking to get into that sort of game, I was expecting it to be a lot more of the same. Thankfully, that was not the case. Even if the build and the feel might leave a little bit to be desired, everything underneath is purely viable and deserves ample attention. The tried and true Snapdragon S4 Pro continues to flaunt its abilities and features like expandable memory and 720p resolution for a smaller display help make the Xperia ZR an easily recommended device. While the Moto X remains quite similar to the ZR in its specs, what is great about the ZR is that you now have choices for smaller and more easily accessible devices that provide as close to a top tier experience as they can. If you want a powerful experience without getting too crazy, the Xperia ZR is your bang for buck phone. It might not be on the cutting edge, but it gets close enough that you might not even be able to tell the difference. As always, thank you very much for watching, and if you liked what you saw, make sure you drop us a like down below. If you want to keep up with all that Android Authority has to offer, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And once you're done with all of that, head on over to AndroidAuthority.com because we're your source for all things Android.